I'm Jeremy, co-founder and now CEO of Sensium Fleet Telematics. We are a fleet telematics development company based here in Brisbane. Uh, we started in 2005 uh, in New Zealand. There were three of us who initially started the company um, and you know, 17 years on uh, we've just grown and grown, ex expanded from New Zealand into Australia uh, with you know, future thoughts of getting into the US and Europe. I came here in 2011 uh, and yeah, established the company here uh, with a focus on sales and marketing. But what we also did at that time was white labelled our, our product as well, our platform, and brought on other resellers for our product as well across Australia. Coming from New Zealand, a uh, small population, small country, you know, big brother over there, Australia, is always enticing. So we saw that as a potential sort of big opportunity for growth as well. The simple side of it is, is knowing where your vehicles are, so, so GPS tracking is what it kind of used to be called. Um, it's changed a lot now and got a lot more comprehensive and it's no longer just knowing where a vehicle is, it's knowing, so the telematics is, is you know, telemetry, so it's the understanding what the vehicle's doing, getting that, that vehicle data, if it's an EV, getting battery charge levels and that type of thing, if it's a petrol car, fuel tank levels, coolant temperatures. So getting, getting a lot of data from vehicles and bringing it to a, a platform so our customers can see uh, what that data is doing and manage their fleet from there. We make our customers' lives easier by providing that location data of their vehicles. It allows them to better manage their, their fleet. We started doing fairly basic GPS tracking. It was more for consumers to find their car if it got stolen. Uh, so that was a very simple product back then, but even then we were world leading. Um, we had made it, we, we were one of the first to do web-based mapping. Um, yeah, everything we were doing at that point, no one else in the, in the industry was doing. Um, but it has changed a lot now, and as vehicles have got smarter, and there's a lot more data in these vehicles, we're now connecting into them and pulling that data out. So companies can now use that to manage their, their fleet of vehicles. And yeah, it's not just about where the vehicle is, it's how it's being driven. Uh, what the vehicle's doing at the time, temperatures, battery charge levels, just all of that information that fleet managers need to, to manage that, that fleet of vehicles. We spend a lot of time talking to our customers. Uh, I think the, the market's changed in a lot of ways, but we s try to specialise in the areas that our customers are, are, are in. So we've been talking to a lot of councils over the last 10 years and government fleets and one of their biggest issues was getting EVs into their fleets. They, they didn't know how to manage that, they didn't understand how the battery charging had to work and if they tried to put them into pool vehicles, the, yeah, as soon as a staff member went to that pool vehicle to get into it and it was an EV, the battery was flat, uh, they had to, yeah, it was, a, it was a waste of time, it didn't work, they couldn't do it. So these EVs just ended up parked at the back of their underground car park and left. Uh, while everyone favoured the petrol engines. So the work we've been doing has been based around what we've been talking about to the councils and the large fleet um, owners to allow them to use the EVs as fleet vehicles or, or just, just better manage that in, in ways they couldn't before. Put a lot of focus on, to, on getting that vehicle data. There's a couple of paths we're, we're looking at taking at the moment. One is around road user charges for EVs and obviously that'll translate to uh, all modern vehicles. But it, the, what, the technology we've got would allow governments to um, charge the road user charges differently depending on what roads the, the vehicle's been driven on uh, and uh, times that they've been driven. So if you're driving in peak traffic, your road user charge might be a different price as a, you know, if you're driving on a back road in the middle of the night. Uh, so that, that's one place we're looking at. It took us a long time before we could sell anything. Uh, it was so different to New Zealand. But we spent the next number of years 
Yeah, working the market out, it took us a long time. Like, you think that Australia and New Zealand are very similar, but very different in the way they do business. So what we did, we took our time, we, we went out and met people, we did everything we needed to do, made the networks, and it's just the legwork. We, we did that for years. Uh, so that now has, has paid dividends. We're, we're now uh, very well known in Australia, uh, especially in the, the councils and the government sort of side of things and the larger fleet. So that's, that's been a real drive for us is to get to the point we're at now uh, and just knowing that it's hard work to get there. We do everything quite differently to our competitors. We are locally based. We do do our development here. Our manufacturing is also done in, in Brisbane. Uh, we develop our product from end to end. So we do the hardware, we do the platform, we do the communication in between. So there's, there's not many people in our industry that do that. And that gives us the ability to, to add on to it and to build these features that, that really our competitors can't do. Seventeen years ago, we were offering this product to our customers to help them improve efficiency then. Uh, they could see where their vehicles were, run some simple reports, activity reports, the mileage they were travelling, the, the ways they were getting from A to B. But now, you know, 17 years on, we've just been developing that and it, it's gone well beyond just a dot on a map or a simple report. Uh, it's now gone into the full driver behaviour, how they're driving, G-forces everywhere. Uh, right down to what the vehicle is doing at the time, throttle positions, everything about that, that vehicle. So you know, to get efficiency from your vehicles, it's not just getting them from A to B correctly, but it's also driving them correctly from A to B as well. And giving some information to fleet managers about how to train their drivers on, on that efficiency or, and, and safety as well. Part of what we're doing with this latest development, getting all of that vehicle data included in that for most vehicles is things like uh, tyre pressure, tyre temperatures. So if you can, so a fleet manager can spot quite quickly if there is an issue with a vehicle. Also bringing back vehicle fault codes and other, just other information around the, the safety of that vehicle. So on top of the driver behaviour, there's also the vehicle safety as well. I wouldn't consider myself a nerd. Um, my background was product design, so I've always done CAD design uh, and, and sort of been in technical fields, but I'm not a developer, I don't write software. Uh, and I think that's what's helped us develop our product in a way that's more simple for our customers to use it. It hasn't been designed by developers, it's been designed by someone who, who you know, creates things that people should use. Uh, so as, as we've gone through, we've, we've made sure that the, the UI or the user interface is simple to use for people. Um, we've had customers who had never used computers before in their business. And you know, one of my first, we actually had to go out with, with the owner of a, a transport company and buy his first laptop. And we took it back to his office and set him up so he could use our product. Uh, so, you know, he had to be able to use it. He was a good lesson for us, that we had to make a product that people who didn't know how to use a computer, yeah, here's how to use it. So we've kept it simple, easy, uh, all the way through. Everything we do, we design around customers. We talk to our customers regularly about what they think should be in our product uh, and what would make their lives easier. Uh, that's something I've personally done a lot too, is spent time with our customers, our resellers, uh, and just understood what, what the customers need out of us. One way is talking to our customers and governments and, and potential customers, but the other way is also uh, belonging to different associations around Australia and New Zealand. So we do belong to, to the Australian Fleet Management Association, for example, which gets us to their conferences, gets us in front of all of the fleet managers in, in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, so you know, we're, we're just always around the people that, that use our product and it gives us that ability to always talk to them and, and understand what's difficult in their, in their business. Um, as you say, everybody does require something different, but what we typically do is take a step back from that, and when you do that and so then look at it 
everyone really overall needs the same thing. And what that is, is accurate data, secure data. Yeah, so we focus on that, that data integrity. Uh, we, we get uh, professional security companies to test our platform uh, because the governments require that. You know, they need to make sure their data is safe. But what that means is a plumbing company who are using our product, they benefit from that because they're getting a product that is, is at that government level uh, for really the price of a, of a yeah, standard product. Because we develop our hardware in Australia, and it's specifically for Australia and New Zealand, uh, we do have the RCM approval, and it is that's a regulatory compliance mark, and it's mandatory for most electronics devices to have that. Um, it's worth checking if you are using some kind of fleet telematics that your hardware does have that little triangle with a tick on it. Um, but what that means is we've gone through the process of having it tested, it's electrically safe, it's uh, not radi uh, cre creating radiation that's going to interfere with other things in your vehicles or uh, other things around your vehicles. So it, it's, it's the guarantee that we can give that we've done everything we can to make sure that our hardware is the best it can be. Moving forward, we're, we're still carrying on with the hardware development. We're pushing the boundaries on size, we're trying to make smaller devices, we're pushing the boundaries on longevity as in battery life and you know, for, for non-powered assets to have a battery powered device that lasts many, many years. Uh, we're, we're doing that, but I think we've also proven we're good at hardware and you know, a couple of weeks ago we even had a device come back that was 17 years old from a customer that came out of their vehicle. Uh, and working perfectly still, the only reason they gave it back is because they don't use that car anymore. So it's, yeah, we, we do know what we're doing, we've, we've learnt those lessons and um, it's something we'll carry on to do. So I think the future for us is looking really good, it's actually exciting. Um, with the changes in vehicles, we've, we're keeping up with all the trends on that. We are working with vehicle manufacturers. Um, and getting the assistance of, of loaned vehicles that we can plug into to get the data out. Um, so we're, we're moving forward with the, the industry as well, which is, is exciting for us and our staff and our team members. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're really excited. We're looking forward to what's around the corner.